<laughs> oh boy. Hey guys, Ryan here with True Life K9. So let's talk about leash reactivity or leash aggression. So what is it? Uh, leash reactivity is basically whenever you have your dog on a leash and you go for a walk and for whatever reason, whenever you come across another dog or person, your dog just seems to explode for some reason. They start barking, growling, whining, having a fit. So why do dogs do this? Oftentimes this behavior is mistaken as aggression when in reality it's it's 99% of the time not truly aggression. It can be, uh, but typically it's just a display that the dog is sort of putting on. And then also oftentimes people will mistakenly think that the dog is doing this to protect the owner, which typically that is not the case. So usually there's one of two reasons why a dog does this behavior. One is because of insecurity. And so what happens is the dog is walking, comes across another dog or person, and the dog becomes unsure, suspicious, maybe afraid of whatever they are coming across. And due to the fact that they are constrained by the leash, they, they can't behave naturally. They can't flee. They can't go and check the other dog or person out. And so what happens is that anxious energy builds up and, and then the dog releases that through the, the barking and, and the growling. Um, and then the other reason is because of a combination of frustration and excitement. So the dog may actually want to go check out the, the other dog, may want to engage, but they can't because they're constrained. And so they, again, that frustration kind of builds up and then they just sort of let it out. So how can we work through this? The biggest thing working against us is the dog is not really paying attention to the owner and is distracted by all kinds of other things. When, when you first walk out the door, if you're letting your dog just kind of push through the door, not pay any attention to you, you've already sort of started out on the wrong foot. Your dog is already in a state of mind where they're in autopilot and they're like, they're scanning, they're zoned in on sm smells and all kinds of other things. So I always tell people the walk begins inside the house. The dog should wait for your permission to say, you know, let's go or whatever to give that command to go ahead and go out the door and begin the walk. The next thing is you want to make sure that your dog actually knows how to walk beside you and to not pull ahead and to not pull to the side to go sniff every little mailbox or plant or whatever and to not go pee, mark anywhere the dog wants to. We can let the dog go to the bathroom and sniff when it's uh, when when we give them permission but we don't want the dog to just decide oh let me go check this out it's you're walking the dog is paying attention to you the dog is just following your lead and just waiting for your guidance so once you have gotten your dog into a good state of mind you're walking down the street then when you come across another dog or person and your dog starts to get worked up, you know, intense, kind of focused, then you can go ahead and correct because your dog is all, your dog was already in a good state of mind. So it's going to be easier to snap them out of that, that fixation. So let's think of it as, let's say you've got, you know, a, on a scale of one to 10, if your dog, you're on a walk, your dog is distracted pulling, let's say your dog is at a level four or five as far as being distracted goes. When you come across another dog or person, that distraction is going to go up five, six, seven, eight pretty quickly. And it's going to be really hard to put a cap on that excitement. Whereas if you start the walk off right, the dog's paying attention to you and that amount of distraction is at like a one or a two. Then when you come across the distraction, the dog gets a little bit interested and you can correct right there. And it's going to be much easier to, again, put a cap on that. So the, the two big things to remember when it comes to correcting are you want to correct early and you want to correct firmly. So how can we correct this behavior? There's a few different things we can use. We can use a pet corrector, which is just a can of compressed air. I've got a video of that. You guys can check that out if you want. 
and I've got, uh, I think, a video on a few other ways you can correct for behaviors. There's, there's something called a doggy don't device. You can check that out. You can give the dog a correction with the leash, so a quick leash tug, quick pop. Uh, you could use, you know, if your do if your dog is using a prong collar, that can can work really well. Sometimes a prong collar can get a dog more worked up. Sometimes a remote collar might be the best option. It really can depend on the dog. But the bottom line is we've got to have something to interrupt the dog's focus and to tell the dog, "Hey, I need you to just just relax." So that's basically how we work through that. So hopefully this gives you some good information. Oh, and also I've got a video on how to teach your dog to stop pulling on the leash. So check that video out as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and good luck with training.